If you're doing a trailer build, stop everything you're doing and watch this. Guys, welcome to part four of our trailer build series. I'm super excited about this episode because we're finally going to get to the good stuff. We're going to put the hardware together. We're going to start with our uh, the base, creating the base of our hose reels. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to switch over to the GoPro so you guys can see up close and personal exactly what it is that I'm doing. So let's get into it. Okay guys, here we are. We're gonna put these, uh, we're actually gonna measure these out exactly uh, to proportion so we know what our base is going to be. Now, I'm gonna say this. There's a handful of different ways that you can go about installing um, your hose reels on your trailer. And, and so, you know, let's go over them. You can get somebody to weld it, which I don't recommend because it's very expensive right now. I've done, I've done that in the past, but since I'm doing a, a, a budget build for you guys, I'm gonna show you the, the cheapest, most inexpensive way. And then also a way that you don't, you don't need to rely on anybody else. And that's, that's the whole point of this thing. So again, you can do a, um, an actual weld, take it to a welder and have them make the base for you, that's one way. Another way, and I've done this too before in the past, uh, you just go to a, to like a, a place that sells uh, like a junk metal. Uh, here they have near my shop a metal yard, like a junkyard where they sell, you know, big pieces of metal. And I went there and I bought a five by four feet piece of metal that is like half an inch thick. And then I cut it into a bunch of, um, a, a bunch of different pieces where I could uh, make a little platform for my hose reel. And then I just bolted down to the trailer. I've done that before. And then you can also bolt to the trailer an actual you know a wood base that you cut but what i'm going to show you guys is something where you know if you needed to you could just take it apart like if you're going to repurpose the trailer and that's why i'm doing it this way but also because it's also the most the the cheapest <coughs> most ex inexpensive and one of the easiest ways to do it so let's get over this let's get over here so we can go over it so you guys see in here I got my, my trusty pencil here. We're gonna measure this out. Now, if you remember when I did the, in part three, when, when we did the staging, remember when this hose reel here was touching the other one. So we're gonna have to space out this correctly. And you see how the handle here is touching the, the toolbox. So let me go ahead and put this down and we're going to space this out uh, together. So I want my hose reel to, to be able to, <clears throat> You know, not come too close here to the edge. So this is perfect. It's about an uh, inch and a half out, right? But you, you guys also got to remember your base is going to be flush with this metal bar. Okay, you got to take that into account. But you see like right here, that's where I want it to be right there. Like about an inch or two above my belly button. That's where I want this, this handle to be. So, but here it's not going to go up against the the... The toolbox that we installed so that's perfect right there and then here this spacing here you guys got to remember there's a um a part <coughs> the swivel that's going to go in this end that's going to extend it out about two inches so we need the hose reel to be about right there and again because you know it's going to go out like about here so that that's about right okay so that's more or less right there and i don't need to be <coughs> super Super, super exact down to the millimeter here, because as you guys can see, I'm going to leave a three inch gap in my board, in my base, uh, in case I need to, you know, I need to um, cut it back or anything like that. You know, like I'm not going to cut the board exactly to the size right here of this, uh, of, of this um, hose reel here. So let's measure this out here first, the width. And again, I'm going three inches. See where the, the measuring tape is right there? I'm going to go three inches beyond. So you see that? So this right here is 20 inches. Okay, you guys see right here? 20 inches. Let's see if you can see it from this angle here. 20 inches. So, okay, so my width, I already figured out my width right here 
my width, I, I, I have a, on this uh, cardboard here, I have a box, L, W, H, length, width, and height. So my width has got to be 20 inches. 20 inches, okay. So now let's figure out the length of my board, okay? And I want my board to be more or less flush here to where the metal meets right here. Right here, let me use my pencil here so I can point. I want the board to be flush right here. So let me see here. So that is, that is, and remember I want it to be three inches beyond. So, so okay, so right at the edge of the hose reel, it's 48 inches. See that right here, guys? 48 inches. So I want my base, my base to be 51 inches. That's perfect. So 51 inches. So let me put the length on there. 51 inches. Okay, so that you see, you see, you see how I figured that out, guys. Because remember, I'm going three inches beyond the hose reel, and the reason why I'm doing that is if I need to cut an inch because I, I made it too far, then that's okay. But obviously, if you cut it too short, then there's nothing you can do about that. You just have to go through another another piece of plywood. And by the way, that so the cost to get this done, you're gonna need if you don't have it of course guys like i have so much wood left over from different um from different builds but uh you're gonna need a four by eight sheet of uh pl plywood you're going to need a um like maybe two pieces of two by four eight foot uh two by fours and then you're also going to need a six by six landscaping tie and i'm going to show you exactly what we're going to do with that okay so but so far we have our length we have our width now we need our height okay <clears throat> now remember i want this to be flush now let me see if you guys can see this clearly here so right here i'm exactly 12 inches guys look at that exactly 12 inches so for my so so in order to get the base right here parallel to this beam i need the the the, the bottom of the base the top of the base plus my footers to be 12 inches okay so there you go so my height is going to be my height is going to be 12 inches so there you go there you have it i have my my width right it's going to be 20 inches my length is going to be 51 inches and my height is going to be 12 inches now now that i have those measurements i am going to cut that one and then we're going to fit it here to see how it works if it works good then i'm going to go ahead and cut a second one so let's go over to the cutting table and cut that together okay guys we took our measurements i already made the cut line here i'm going to go ahead and cut this uh, we got our ppes in place and uh yeah let's do this together and uh, get it done There you go guys, we made that cut. Let's go ahead, uh, go over back to the trailer and see how this all comes together. Okay guys, let me show you what I got going on. As you can see here, I already cut the footers. Okay, but don't worry, I'm gonna show you how I did that. And then also the board, you can see here, I, I already cut the other one as well, just to save a little bit of time, because I'm really not trying to make this uh, video too long for you guys but i'm going to show you exactly how i came up with the height of my footers and then you're going to see in a second here how we put this together but let me show you this so the the wood that i'm using okay the plywood that i'm using put this up so you can see here this is three quarter inch okay so when you go to lowe's i got this at lowe's but this is a piece of plywood i've had you know i have a bunch of these sitting around at the shop so you can see here it's three quarter three quarter okay 
three quarter inch plywood. So they come in, you know, four foot by eight foot. So <clears throat> you guys remember here we measured this out that the that the height was 12 inches, right? You guys remember that? Well, so think about this. So we want this to be 12 inches or a little bit higher. And the thickness of the board, you got two, you got a bottom and a top board, right? That has to be taken into account. So, so three quarters of an inch plus three quarters of an inch is an inch and a half or 0.75 of an inch plus 0.75 is 1.5. So that's an inch and a half. So this is what I'm trying to get at. So in order for me to figure out my footer, okay? So, so this is very simple because this footer here, I measured it out at 11 inches, 11 inches. Now, why did I do that? Because you have an inch and a half in the thickness of your bottom board and your top board. That's gotta go into the, to the math, right? So we want 12 inches or more in this case here, I went a little bit more than 12 inches. So the bottom line is the 11 inches of my footer plus an inch and a half because of the thickness of my boards puts me at 12 and a half inches, which is going to get me a little bit higher than this. But let me show you what I mean here. Let me put this together here uh, so you guys can see exactly what it is that I'm talking about. So this is going to go there. Excuse me here, guys. This is not going to be perfect, but in a second here, I am going to um, switch to, what's it called? Switch to, um, <clears throat> we're going to go back to the tripod here, and you guys are going to get to see exactly how I do this. So the bottom line is, it's, and again, I mean, it's not, nothing's bolted down, but you guys see what I'm saying there? So that's what it's going to look like at the end, and of course, we're going to paint it and all that, so, but that's what we're shooting for and then if you guys see on here right oh my god that's heavy let's move this one over of course you know the spacing is not there yet so don't worry about that yet guys but this is just an idea here oh my footer there came out but this is just an idea right so you guys get a visual of what it is that we're creating so you see that and the only thing that we're gonna add to this uh, once we put this together is the, the reel itself is actually not gonna sit on this board. It's gonna sit on a two by four because I want to distribute the weight. Like I don't want the weight, you guys gotta remember these hose reels are heavy, but then you're adding what, an extra 50 pounds or something like that because of the hoses? So what I want is I want to distribute the weight and the way I do that is by actually bolting this to a piece of plywood, to a, a two by four. So I'm gonna show you that at the very end. But the point is, this is how I came up with the height of that, uh, the, the, of my footers. You see what I'm saying? So this is what we're gonna shoot for. But guys, before I put this on tripod, okay? Because I'm gonna show you how we're gonna put this together. Like this is one of those things, guys, I could have put this on time-lapse for you guys, right? But I wanna show you exactly, exactly from my point of view, what it is I'm doing and why I'm doing it this way. Again, guys, this is gonna cost you, uh, uh, I mean, some of you guys might have some of this materials uh, laying around like I did. Like it didn't cost me anything because this is from previous builds, the scrap wood from previous builds. But the bottom line is it's gonna cost you right around maybe 200 bucks, right? With the, with the spray paint. And I have like three or four cans left over from when I spray painted the, the, the toolbox. So, and, uh, but yeah, so check out this video. I'll catch you guys on the other side, but check out this video here of how I actually cut these footers. And then I'll catch you guys back over here and we'll put this thing together. Okay guys, you saw us taking the measurements there on the, in the hose reels, uh, getting the height. So in order to make this work, we're gonna make this 11 inches instead of, uh, instead of 12, because remember, we got the, the, the board, the base and the foundation of the board, the bottom of the board and the top is uh, an inch and a half, right? So when, we're, when it's all said and done, this base is gonna be 12 and a half inches, remember, that that uh, that beam is sits at 12 inches and that's okay i'm gonna sit almost half an inch above the beam and that's okay i just don't want to sit below the beam that's very important 
but uh, in order to get a really round number here I'm gonna I'm gonna make this 11 inches okay and then I'm going to need a total of six of them I'm gonna show you guys how I do the first one and then the other ones I'm gonna do off camera in order to save a little bit of time because I'm really I'm trying to help you guys out and not make this video one hour long so here you go in order to get this done guys of course you're gonna need your trusty pencil you're gonna need measuring tape and you're gonna need one of these guys too this uh, triangle ruler okay and of course your PPEs so I measure this out right here okay and then I put a, a little mark at the 11 inch line right there then I'm going to use my triangle ruler like this okay let me get it a little bit closer here for you guys and then I make the line right there so 11 inches just like that okay then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip it over this way and then I'm gonna just keep going I'm gonna make my cut line just like that this is what I'm gonna cut with my with my um, my saw cutter here okay so there you go we got two more to go and then we're gonna take the circular saw and cut each 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 side now that circular saw is still gonna leave like an inch gap that it can't get to and that's what we have our saw here for we're gonna saw off the very end here together okay there you go and I think you, yep there you go so right there and there you have it guys you see how I put a line on each side now it's ready for the circular saw to go ahead and cut okay, and you're gonna cut all four sides and then we're gonna use the the hand saw to finish it off let's go ahead and do this together Cut one, and then you want to turn it towards you, like that. Then we're going to continue right here. Again, same technique, I turn it towards me. guys you guys probably can't see this very good on camera but now there's only this little tiny little part and then there's gonna be a one inch gap in the middle Alright guys, so you see how it's almost there, but like I said, in the very middle there's going to be like a one inch gap. Then I push this all the way over like this, and I'm going to finish it off with my saw. There you go. It's pretty much that easy. Took all of a couple of seconds to do that. So there you have it. That's my first one right there. Remember this is 11 inches for the footer, and uh, I'll go ahead and cut the the rest uh, off camera here for you guys and I'll, I'll catch you over there okay guys the materials that you're gonna need to get this done I got this a uh, little let me see if you can see the you can see the box there you can probably pause it and zoom in and whatnot but it's a three inch deck screw this thing here is absolutely awesome for wood and then the other one is just a, a inch and a half uh, deck wood uh, wood screw basically it's a this is a wood screw and this is an actual deck it's for deck so the way this is going to work is 
I'm going to use the, the deck screw for the middle. So it's only going to have one of these. And then I'm going to put four uh, on each corner of each footer. So each footer is going to have a total of five screw. One of the three inch deck screw and then the one and a half inch wood screw. And then I also got this guy right here just so I can adjust the footers as I go. I was going to put this on, um, on time lapse for you guys but I think this is one of those parts that is uh, a little bit more intricate so I want to make sure that you guys understand exactly what it is that I'm doing and how I created it. Now the desktop part here that you're seeing on screen is actually the bottom part. I'm just drilling it and then I'm going to flip it over. We're going to measure the reels out and exactly the location of where it's going to go and then I'm actually going to bolt this, not bolt, I'm going to screw it to the to the trailer and then we're going to do the, the top part here. But uh, it gives us an opportunity to talk about the trailer build and about your business and talk maybe a little bit about how to grow your business and all of that. So let's go ahead and get started here with the very first one so I can show you guys. Look. So I got the footer here. Remember, this isn't bolted to the bottom, right? I'm doing the, this is the actual bottom that I'm going to flip it. So I just want to make sure that the corners, the corners are straight. So just like that. Okay, that's pretty even right there. Okay. This take, takes a little bit. Well, like I told you guys from the very beginning, you know, uh, building a, um, a trailer rig is not something you're gonna do in you know a couple days guys so it takes time so we got our we got our drill ready to go and we're gonna start with this one straight down the middle so just like that put a little bit of weight on it just like that in there now we're gonna do these four or girl excuse me guys just like that Try not to drop any because it's happened to me before where I dropped some and then I got a flat tire when I try to move the trailer. So there you go. And again, I'm just, I'm just doing the four corners. One down. Then we're going to do the second one right here. Once, I, once I've walked you to like, let's say we're going to do that corner together, maybe each corner, exactly how I'm showing you here. And then we're going to we're going to talk a little bit about about a couple things because like some of you guys have been asking me about the machine and which machine you should get and i'm going to explain that in detail for you guys exactly what machine you need to get started to you know for your pressure washing business there you go guys the first one is in the books again the the big deck screw the three inch one straight down the middle and then boom 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 four in each corner so let's go ahead and do that corner <coughs> next and then we'll move on again I have a rubber mallet to get this to help me out a little bit okay so I position it, it doesn't matter the position of the bottom one right now because the, the whole thing is it's not aligned or anything like that oh that's pretty close right there guys oh, that's about right 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 there okay so I get my my deck screw three inch deck screw Ooh, that's pretty close right there. Again, straight down the middle. Guys, remember, I'm not a carpenter. I'm not an engineer. Nothing like that. I'm sure, you know, there's a couple of you guys that are probably carpenters and you're like pulling your hair out probably at the way that I'm doing things. But you guys got to remember me. My skill is in, you know, I'm skilled at building, building, building a company, getting customers, that, that, that sort of thing. My skill set is out in the field doing quality work. You know, I've been doing this for 11 years. And they, these are just some of the things that I've learned along the way by myself, right? So again, the four corners, one down. And the way that we're building this rig, guys, <coughs> it's, it's gonna last, you know, seven to 10 years. So imagine how much money you know, uh, you know, you'll be able to make with a rig like this, right? There you go. That's in there. There you go. So these two corners, 100% done. Now we're going to go ahead and knock this guy out. Same thing here. Oh, where's my... There you go. Just, just put it in there. 
Ooh, that's pretty flush right there, guys. That's pretty good. And that's, uh, let me see. Yep, yeah, that's right in the middle. And I'm using my body weight to, to uh, just to hold it down a little bit. Again, same, same technique here, middle screw here. The, the deck screw, sorry, in the middle. There you go, and then we'll we'll do the the wood screws, the little guys, the four in the, each corner there. But but yeah, one of the things that I wanted to talk to you guys about. So one of the questions that you guys might have, you know, when when you're you're getting your equipment, you know, in order to get your rig built, one of the questions might be, you know, what what machine should you go with, right? And here's the bottom line, guys. You know, when I started my business. I didn't start my business with any kind of fancy equipment, right? I started my business with um, with a pressure washer I bought on Craigslist for 50 bucks, right? Let me put this last one in there, guys, and we'll do the other side. There you go. This, one, two, three, done. So I bought a, a pressure washer. Guys, I don't even remember, like, how many PSI or GPMs, but... Knowing what I know now, I don't even think it was 1.8 GPMs. I mean, it, that machine got me through about my first three, maybe four weeks in the business. But the bottom line is that's how I got started. So what machine is right for you? Let me get this, uh, this next one ready here, guys, while we're, while we're talking shop here. What machine is right for you? You know, if you guys get that machine that is in the in the description right or you already have a machine the bottom line is oh that's perfect right there guys uh, one second ah right there that's perfect the bottom line is you know you want to start if you can you want to start with four gallons a minute oh there's a flying through guys give me a second here I'll do this one let the helicopter fly through Okay, there you go. So I've never mentioned this before, but um, I am situated in the middle of about three major bases like uh, St. Andrews and a couple others. So, you know, periodically we'll have big warplanes and jets and all kinds of helicopters come through. So, but anyway, so four gallons a minute is where you want to start. If you can do five gallons a minute. Um, since you're starting in a business, you do not let me repeat that you do not need an eight gallon a minute in order to make a lot of money in a pressure washing business and i'm going to explain to you you know why i think four gallons a minute machine is enough for you all right let me fix this photo real quick actually let me do the corner one first knock that out and then i'm going to show you guys how i flip this so then we'll do the top together all right so let me do this footer okay so almost right there Right there. It's not bad right there. Again, guys, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm trying to get it as close to the edge and squared up as possible, but at the end of the day, it doesn't have to be like millimeter perfect, you know what I mean? Uh, but uh, you, you want to try to get it as close as possible, but like I said, it doesn't have to be perfection either. All right, so that, that's pretty good right there. Again, same technique, deck screw in the middle. Deck screw, and then we're gonna do four wood screws. So most of you guys uh, may not know this, but um, so for every GPM, you guys ever, you guys ever wondered 
how professionals are able to get their their solution their their cleaning agents up so high and you know without using a ladder the reason for that being is because for every gpm of your pump right so gpm stands for gallons per minute for every gpm you can go up to 10 feet in terms of height with your with your water with your chemical right so like for example let's say you have a dewalt or you have a craftsman and they're two gpms right and that's like your typical home depot slash lowe's brand you know two gpms right around there that means you can go up to 20 feet right so 10 feet for every gpm okay and so let me get these last two And the reason why most professionals, you know, will tell you that you want to start at least with four GPMs, because that means that you can go 40 feet in the air, up in the air with your solution using your injector, right? Using your, with your J-Rod, your downstream injector. So the bottom line is that's going to get you through 98% of, of most houses, right? So, and then eventually, you know, as you start making money, let me get this last one real quick guys all right Ooh, that's perfect right there so as you guys start making money i always say this when, this is what i want you guys to take away from this conversation you want to grow your business before you grow your equipment let me repeat that you want to grow your business before you grow your equipment you want to be able to get customers have you know a good google my business boots on the ground marketing a referral program and oh by the way by the way guys if you haven't done all uh if you haven't done this already make sure you go back after you finish this series go back and uh into my archives there my library and you're gonna find episodes 51 through 59 is our marketing series that's the first series that we did that's going to teach you how to get customers hold on a second guys it's going to teach you how to uh episode 56 you know and i think that's what the fifth or fourth part of that series it teaches you how to uh, optimize your google my business that's something that you're gonna you're gonna need to know right so that's going to help you get a lot of customers we talk about things you know how to pick up uh reviews how to optimize your your google my business so you can rank number one locally in your area all right one more here right here in the end when i flip it over i'll show you guys uh how these screws look but so the bottom line is you have the one deck screw straight in the middle three inch deck deck screw and then you have the four smaller screws inch and a half wood screw so you have just like that bam 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 this is all done let me set this aside here because now we're going to flip this over and we're going to measure this out exactly remember this right here what we actually created is the the bottom right and the board that's down here is actually going to be the top so there you go push this aside that's our bottom right there done and now before we make the top before we do the top i want to actually measure this out to see exactly where it's going to go and we're going to use 12 screws here the the little guy not the big one not the three inch one but the little one we're going to use the little one to to screw this straight to the trailer all right but first i want to see where it's going to go all right so that's that's gonna go like that right that's gonna go like that and then let's see if this this works right there so this has to come over a little bit but it's pretty much right there so let me let me take this off because I want to be very exact this right here has to come over yep, that's I think that's it right there guys let me see let me just make sure here like i said before you know you want to measure twice cut once All right. that's 
pretty good right there. I like it. That's exactly where, this is exactly where it needs to go. And of course, you guys gotta remember, the reels are gonna sit on a two by four, right? And we're gonna do that next. But uh, this, is, this is exactly where the base needs to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this out of the way. And we can uh, go ahead and screw this, the, the, the bottom, move this. We can go ahead and screw this straight to the trailer and then we're gonna do the top here together. So again, I'm doing 12 screws. So I'm gonna basically do like four, two, and four. What is that? 10 and then one and one. All right, just to show you guys here. And again, I'm not using the big screw. I'm just gonna use these inch and a half wood screws. All right, so we're gonna start right here. Bam, straight onto the trailer. That one's in there. And then I'll do this one. Bam, straight onto the trailer. And then I'm gonna do four here, and four here, that's eight, that's 10. And then I'll just do two somewhere else. I guess what, what I can do is I can do five. Five here and five here, there you go. We'll do it that way. Uh, but the bottom line, guys, is that's what it is. You know, you, you have to understand that. That's why professionals use certain equipment, right? Because we're out there and you're running into, you know, two-story houses, you know, houses that are 40, 50, 60 feet up in the air, and you're not gonna be able to, you see here? Okay, that's three. Okay, let's put one right here in the middle as well. Uh, you're not gonna be able to get very high if you're using like a three, three gallon a minute machine, let's say, then that you're not gonna be able to get a lot done. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Now let's move on to this side right here. But the bottom line is uh, the machine at the in the description below, or if you already have a four gallon a minute machine, that's a great way to start guys. And then guess what? As your business picks up, right? You know, as you, let's say you get up to doing 10 houses a week, a week, then what I would do is, I would take that machine, do a tune-up on it, keep it as, as my backup for a while in case something happens, and you know, you get yourself a, a five gallon a minute machine. That's the best way to do it. All right, and you're gonna be able to get a lot, a lot done with that, and then, you know, and again, you're gonna be able to get 10 feet in the air for every GPM, and then with your surface cleaner, you're going to get it basically the way it works is one inch of surface cleaning per GPM. So, you know, if you want a, a, a 20 inch surface cleaner, ideally you want to have a five gallon a minute machine. Now, the 20 inch surface cleaner will work with a four gallon a minute machine, but just not as effective as it would with a five gallon a minute machine. But, you know, so like the big guys, you know, like I have 10 gallon a minute machines, eight gallon a minute machines, because you know, some of my surface cleaner, my biggest surface cleaner is 36 inches, and a four gallon a minute machine would not, it wouldn't even do anything with that. So, so I got one, two, three, so two more right here. So we'll do one more. And then that's it. You guys see it? Oh my God, guys, look at that. I mean, I'm moving the whole trailer here, guys. There you have it. So this is done. So we put a total of 12 wood screws. Now let's go ahead and put our, our base, our top, our top, uh, the top of, the, of this base. And that's it. So, you know, you guys don't have to worry about that so much, you know? Get your, make sure that you have at least a four gallon a minute machine to start. I would, I would, uh, I would start with that. That's just the bottom line. So let's see here. Okay, that's that's about that's about right where we want to be right there. Okay, I'm gonna start with this end right here. Yeah, because this is perfect right here, right here. 
and this in here this is coming over just a little bit yeah because uh, it moved a little bit on me down here but that's not a big deal but this is flush and perfect here on this side so we'll go ahead and start screwing this side first so the bottom line guys is you know start with the four gallon a minute machine grow your business you know you should invest oh it moved on me guys hold on a second should be right there you should invest first on your marketing right uh let me give you guys a quick example of what not to do oh there you go so i know this guy you know uh he was telling me you know because i coach a lot of guys in the industry you know I, i'm a mentor uh and uh this guy reached out to me and uh wanted to hire me you know as as his coach and uh I, I was analyzing his situation and and uh he was lamenting the fact that you know he just didn't have any money for marketing and i was you know when i when i dug down deep to see what the situation was it uh basically what happened was there you go and then one more He had spent so much money, so much money, guys, on equipment. Guess what? He didn't have any money left over, not even to make a flyer. That's how bad this guy was in terms of finances. Not even enough money left over to print out some flyers, okay? You don't want to be in that situation, right? You see what I'm saying? Like, you want to have a lot of money uh, to go into marketing. Because in, in the case of this guy, you know, he's sitting on a, you know, $25,000, $30,000 system and he's not even getting two jobs a week, a week because he doesn't know anything about marketing. And that's the problem. You want to be able to develop that skill because marketing is a skill. All right, four right here as well. One. Two. Two, three, it's gonna be my third one right here. Bam, four. Like that. Oh, that looks pretty good. We'll do the middle right here. So, you know, you guys, you guys, I want you guys first to, to grow your business. Remember. You want to grow your business before you grow your equipment. So that's why I created that list down there for you guys, because that's your starter, your starter kit, right? That's that's uh, how, that's a good, good equipment for you to start with. And then as you grow, as you get more customers, ooh, then you're you're going to upgrade little by little. That's how I did it. And guess what? It took me three years, guys, before I got up to a four gallon a minute machine, right? There you go, and one more here. So one, two, three is done. Now we'll do this corner right here. So yeah, guys, it took me uh, three years, you know, and I, I went building little by little by little. I remember I was recently talking to somebody about this. You know, the 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 first like four roof jobs that I ever did. Give me a second here, guys, right here. Oh. Guys, the first roof jobs that I ever did, I would say like the first four or five, I did it with a back backpack sprayer kind of like the ones that the lawn guys use you know and and that's just how i did it you know I, and then i i went as i went making money i started developing you know systems and buying and upgrading equipment but i didn't dump a bunch of money into equipment without without marketing all right there you go one more Ooh, we only got two more to go here, guys. I mean, this thing is sturdy. 
it is really really sturdy and then we're gonna put the hose reels on here and measure out you know the what we need for the for the two by four and the bottom line guys is you know you want to start small oh oh get this out of my way here uh, you guys want to start small and grow from there you know um, I have a um, a challenge for you guys I call it SOMA SOMA is an acronym that stands for SOMA if you want I can email that to you of course you will find my email in the description below I actually put it right here for you guys across the screen ask at mrbubbles.com let me repeat that ask at mrbubbles.com guys soma it's a it's a 18 month challenge if you accomplish everything that's on this list at the end of that 18 months you will be at that 50k mark if you do exactly what i tell you to do on there so i highly recommend that you guys uh take on this ch challenge the 50k challenge so i'll send that to you but uh but yeah so you guys don't have to worry you know some of you guys are so focused on equipment you know that's not that's not where all the money is you have to develop yourself develop skills skill sets that you need you know develop yourself in the field learn how to market learn how to sell things like that there you go one more here okay guys we got one more to go right here uh, of course, we're going to do the center one with our deck screw right here. Boom. And then uh, the four corners. Okay. So that's what I want you guys to focus on. Now that you're, you know, because at the end of the day, this build, if you have a trailer, is going to cost you less than $3,000. But if you have to buy a trailer, it'll cost you anywhere between three to five thousand dollars. But guess what, guys? Like with a trailer like this, you're making a thousand bucks a day. Let's say hypothetical, you know, you're not at that level yet, right? And let's say you only get five jobs a week. Well, that's fifteen hundred dollars a week. In three weeks, you're gonna get your money back anyway. And these things they hold their value. All right? We've talked about this before. All right, so let's do these last three. Almost there. Bam. And bam. Boom, okay. Put this away here. Let's get our hose reels on here. You see this guy? I mean, there's just absolutely no way. I mean, the only way this is coming out of here is if we we take it out of here that's it all right so let's measure this guy out so this is good right there oh, you got me. that's pretty good right there so what i want to measure now is uh the measurement that i need to be able to cut my uh two by four right because the, this again like i said this is not actually going to sit on this it's going to sit on a two by four and again the reason why i'm doing that is because i want to redistribute the weight okay so here you go and that's not the only reason by the way you're going to get to see when we bolt this down the bolt that i use is pretty thick it's actually like a like a really thick screw that we're going to use a ratchet um, wrench to get it in there and so I need it to be at least two, three inches thick, and, and it's not going to be good here for this, for this plywood. That's why really we're using the, the, the two by four, but it's killing two birds with one stone. So the bottom line is, so this hose reel, right, uh, from, from here to here is 17 inches, guys. 17 inches. You got that? Let's measure this one just in case. So 17 inches. So we want the two by four to be, let's say an inch, inch, that's 19 inches, right? So if we were to make it, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it 20 inches. So we need four pieces of two by four that is, that is uh, 20 inches long. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off camera 
and then I'll, I'll see you guys back here so we can uh, we can start to bolt this thing together so catch you guys on the other side okay guys I went ahead and cut the four pieces of uh, two by four remember the the measurement was 20 inches and then I put the hosiery on there so you know just to make sure and then wherever the the bar of the hosiery was I put these lines you see these pencil lines right there that way I knew where to put the the bolt so that same three inch see where my finger is right there the three inch deck screw I put three on these as well one two and three same thing over here look you can see right there one two and three I did that with every single one of them and again that's where each one of the reels are going to sit okay and then remember I was telling you guys about how I I bolted these down see so one in the middle so that's the three inch and this is the inch and a half one so there you have it so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna put this back on a tripod for you guys so you can see me in time lapse I am going to spray paint this guy and then I'll catch you guys on the other side as we uh, I'm gonna show you how to bolt the the actual reel down to this base we created so I'll, I'll catch you guys over there okay as you guys can see clearly see building a a pressure washing trailer rig guys it's very time consuming it's something that is going to take you quite a while you know to be done right and it is a tremendous but a tremendous amount of work but guys the bottom line is it's also very rewarding because once you do this properly and you guys get this trailer up and running, you're going to be able to make anywhere between $1,500 to $2,000 a day with a trailer like this. And that's just the bottom line. But, you know, you have to do it. It has to look professional and it has to function professionally. So, but uh, it's very rewarding. But yeah, let's get back to the, the shop and uh, show you guys how uh, we finish this thing up. Okay, you guys can see how much better that looks painted. I mean, it blends with the trailer. You can't even really tell until you get up closer like this. And uh, let's go ahead and put uh, our hose reels on here, guys, so we can measure this out. And I'm gonna show you how we're going to bolt this thing down. <clears throat> I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna bolt one, and then I'm gonna do the other ones off camera because uh, like I said, I mean, I'm really not trying to, you know, make this video way, way too long. So that's pretty good right there. Okay, and you see, guys see the space here? You see that? So this is, it's giving me exactly the amount that I need. I'm gonna put this over just a little, like a smidge right there. That's perfect. So you guys see right there in the middle, I got enough room right there and then I got this right here this pencil my trusty pencil here and what I'm gonna do guys is you see how there's a little hole right here that's where my 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 screw is gonna go and the screw that I'm using is this one right here guys it's called a lag lag screw lag uh, lag screw and this is three eighths and then it's two inches okay three eighths two inches so what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh it's, man it's gonna be hard for you guys to see this but i'm going to put a like a little dimple right there in the middle and i'm going to take the the hose reel off so you can you can clearly see here you know uh where we need to drill and i'm going to show you here where we're going to drill this guy right there right there so right now i'm just making the dimple like i said like a little x x marks the spot if you will even though the the color uh we painted this black you can still see it because the 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 pencil mark is is like gray so i can see it there clearly and you want to try to get as close to the middle as possible okay right here 
right there and then we'll do the last one right here go ahead and take this off you guys may not be able to see this too well on camera but you can see so it's right there right there right there and right there okay let's put this one over here okay so this one's right there right there this one here up oh, right there right by the bolt by the screw that we put in there and this one's right here okay so let's go ahead so i have this drill right here and the bit is a little bit like half 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 the width of the actual screw you don't want it the same you don't want a 3 8 bit so you want it to be, see how you see how different that is uh, so this is like half this bit is half the size of this all right so we're gonna drill right here okay already through drill right there gonna drill right here and then we're gonna drill right here all right right here right here you guys probably can't see the dimple too well but for me I mean it's sticks out like a sore thumb and the last one right here there you go I mentioned this before you know you're, you're not gonna get very far with uh, you know running a, a pressure washing business without a really good drill <clears throat> just absolutely impossible okay so let's put this guy back on here we're gonna see here how well you see guys i don't know if you can see there where my finger is but that's perfect there oh this one's perfect on the right perfect right there as well oh all hole all the holes there match perfectly okay now let's do the pressure reel okay so oh right there right there hopefully you know uh you guys are seeing okay with the the gopro because you never know oh guys wow it's freaking perfect came out perfect like they're each like all the holes are like right smack dab in the middle okay so now what so i drilled the hole and then now we're just going to screw this in there let me show you what i got here uh i got a locking right a locking washer that's going to go first and then a regular washer it's going to go right there so you see that right there that washer is going to sit right snug like that okay okay we'll do that we'll do that one over there and you need a three eighths wrench for this so you're going to use uh you're going to do a little bit with your finger first right so as far as you can right here i mean i'm tightening it with my finger as, as as far as i can and that's the best that i can do with my finger and i'm going to use this this uh this uh what's it called the ratchet and i'm just gonna work it all the way down you guys see right there it's going it just takes a little bit of time but it's getting there one two oh one two three four five six seven eight now i'm getting close you see that i'm already like 75 percent of the way there so before i tighten it all the way i'm gonna put one more on the other side uh and then like i said i am going to catch you guys on the other side because 
I'm gonna do the other ones off camera for you guys. Okay, so I'm gonna put one right here. Right here. On this side. And then I'll tighten this one and that one. Oh, yep, that's pretty good. Now I can go ahead and take this. I'll tighten it, not, you know, about, like I want to say, a good 80, 90%. And then I'll really tighten them when they're all in. You see that right there, guys? Look at that. That's already in there. All right? Now let's do this one here together ah, that's as tight as I can do it with my hand okay then again I'm using a 3 8 3 8 ratchet and then I just put it in there like that nice and gentle like that I hold it just like that just like that oh Yeah, guys. Oh, that's already real. Well, it's getting there. In terms of tight, it's getting there. Oh, guys, that's already pretty tight. That's as tight as that will go. So let's tighten this one right here. Oh, that's pretty tight already. Yeah, that's very tight. All right, so you guys seeing how I do that? Again, I'm gonna do the other ones off camera and then uh, I'll catch you guys here at the end. We're gonna do a walk around just so you guys can see exactly what it looks like and and how solid it is okay so i'll catch you guys here at the end okay guys there you have it the finished product let's uh walk around here so i can show you what it looks like from the front here you know there you go you know like i said the base you can't even tell that it's there right it looks like those reels are floating in the air so to speak but let me show you here so remember guys these bolts they're called the lag lag screws and you're gonna get three eighths two inches you see that and guys i mean look at this I mean, i'm pulling on this thing nothing there you go super solid ready to go you can see it here from this angle right here guys those those reels they're not going absolutely anywhere super strong you see the different bolts on there so you got four lag screws on there and that's all you need okay so there you go and uh and that's that, that that's it guys for this one for part four i really appreciate you guys coming to my channel and watching this uh and following me with this series guys highly highly recommend you guys uh tune into the next episode in the next episode we're actually going to plumb these reels so I'm going to show you all the parts that you need for that. And then we're going to put the, the water hose and the pressure hose on there. And uh, yeah. And the other thing is, you know, I always mention this. I've mentioned this several times already. Guys, if you want the blueprint for how to get this done, I will email you our trailer build blueprint. And, uh, you know, I, I love, absolutely love interacting with you guys. And I do answer all of my emails. But yeah. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bubbles out.